Hey guys, strolling through the food forest garden today to talk about a very important topic that affects apples and pears and other such fruits, and that is fire blight. Fire blight is a dangerous bacterial disease that affects many orchards and destroys many trees, including one of my beloved apple trees a few years ago. But since then, I have found a key ingredient and some key things that have helped me deal with fire blight for the rest of my trees, and I haven't lost another tree since. Really want to share this with you. So I'm going to bring the camera around and show you my trees here. So this is one of two multi-graft apple trees that I got from Costco about eight years ago. I wasn't really selective about the variety, which I should have been, and more of that later in this video. But the two trees I purchased were doing beautiful, starting to produce amazing fruit for me. When fire blight swept through my area and when it first showed up very aggressively, I went straight to doing a lot of research to see what I can do to treat my trees. And the most consistent conventional wisdom that I found was to take your pruners, sterilize them, find where that curled, burning looking, you know, leaf and wood is, hence the word fire blight, you know, find where that inf infection is and go down about 12 to 16 inches down the branch and cut in a good place right to the nearest growth and nearest node from there in order to keep that fire blight from spreading to the rest of your tree. So right away, I began to implement that and right away, the fire blight just kept on spreading to the rest of my tree. You know, I'd clean it up really good. It would look like there's zero infection left. I'd make sure that I cut really, really low and still went to the rest of my tree. You know, those leaves would start to curl on other branches and I'd cut those branches. And I pretty much fought this fire blight for probably two to three years until I ended up with this. <laughs> so this is the other of the two trees that I bought. And unfortunately it lost the fight to fire blight and all my work in trying to cut it out ended up being in vain. As I was making all these cuts, by the way, I was also trying a few topical things that were recommended to me, but none of these things worked, by the way, because this is a systemic disease. It's really important to realize that. So even in commercial operations, it's really, really hard to treat fire blight effectively. At around that same time, there was a huge infection in this tree showing up. And so I went to work on this tree the same way that I did with the other, knowing that I might be losing my battle very shortly here on this tree as well. When I received some advice from a few different permaculturalists who are also commercial tree specialists, and this was my huge game changer. So the advice goes like this, let it go and let it fight. That's right. It actually surprised me as well and it didn't make a lot of sense. And some people may disagree with this, but all I can do is share with you what has worked beautifully for me. These guys were basically saying that when you make these cuts, you continue to create the openings and vulnerability to spreading the infectious disease. So as hard as it was, because I love pruning my trees and I love taking care of my trees, I actually took my hands off of the tree completely. I didn't prune it at all. And when the fire blight showed up, I actually just left it alone. And almost right away, I actually began to see the tree fight in a very effective way. So if you look closely here, here's the old evidence of that. You can see these dead branches, especially, yeah, there's one here, maybe a little higher up uh, with the contrast. You'll see these dead old branches, some with like the little pieces of dried fruit remaining. This is actually from almost two years ago. But this is all dead. It all succumbed to the disease. But what happened was that it was almost like the tree was isolating and sequestering the disease in the branches that it was already affecting, but keeping it from spreading to the rest of itself. It's almost like the disease just stayed in that branch and destroyed the branch, but the branch just holds the disease and just slowly dies, hopefully along with the disease itself in time. So here's a quick example. If you look closely, this branch right here is long dead, but the one right next to it is totally alive. So this one did succumb to the, to the virus. You could actually see where it looks kind of burnt and it's all dark here, but somehow the tree actually kept it from spreading beyond this point here and the rest of the tree is totally fine adjacent to it. I feel like if I had cut that off, just like I had done in the past, then it would have very quickly spread to the adjacent branch because it did that so many times. Again, until this one was dead. Here's another example, and this will really show what it's doing here. So you can see that this branch is totally dead, long dead from the virus. And it looks like the tree sequestered it 
and actually created a cutoff line in its tissue right there. You see that? There's like a very clear cutoff line where the infected wood stops and the living flourishing wood begins. It's been a few years and starting even the first year back from not cutting and not intervening, it began to produce all this beautiful fruit like this. And we got a beautiful crop. And this year we will see the same thing happen. So let the tree fight. You know, it's hard for me not to want to cut off, especially these ugly pieces here. And I might do that, um, I'm, but I'm just going to try not to go too close because I really want the tree to just allow that dead infected wood to just stay where it is and not allow it to infect the rest. So every time I want to intervene, I remind myself, let the tree fight, let it go. With that said, here is some really important advice as well to help prevent fire blight infections from happening and even to help your trees get through it. So number one is always select varieties that are going to be really resilient and resistant to fire blight. Do your research. Don't just get your apple tree from your nearest Home Depot or something like that because chances are they're not selling disease resistant trees. Since then, I have introduced some really great varieties of apple trees into my garden because I did some research and I found out which ones were good. So since then, I have planted freedom and liberty. <laughs> it's a great combination. But, uh, but there's a freedom apple and a liberty apple, and both are flourishing and doing really well, especially the liberty one that I planted a few years ago. It's got a ton of fruit on it already. This past year, I also planted one called Enterprise. So those three right there are, are known to be excellent in their resistance to fire blight. And so far, I've had zero fire blight show up on them. Advice number two is, again, don't be quick to cut your trees. You know, it's good to prune fruit trees well, but with apple trees, if you if you have apples that are prone to infection from diseases like fire blight or you're in an area with a lot of fire blight, really be careful not to over prune your trees and really relax from your pruners because it's important to realize that every time you make a cut, you're opening up a wound on the tree to make it susceptible to this disease. When you do prune, prune in the dead of winter, but especially a little bit earlier on. You know, with a lot of fruit trees, you can prune them in the late winter and early spring. But I would say right in the dead of winter, shortly after it has gone completely dormant, then make your cuts because that will give your tree plenty of time to scab up and heal up so that it covers that open wound. Anytime your tree succumbs to any stressful event that opens up wounds, it is also opening up an opportunity for fire blight. So this year, is, it, it probably will be a challenge for this tree because we have had a hailstorm and some of these leaves have been kind of torn through, kind of like this. Here's one example. Um, and, and even open leaves can be an issue. Now, you know, you can't keep infection from happening solely from that because even from, you know, opening its buds in the spring, the virus can be spread, it's believed, uh, through pollinators as well. But you can minimize the exposure that your tree has to the virus by just being mindful of these things. Another important piece of advice is moisture. So you want your leaves, you know, your, your, your upper branches up here to, to remain dry. We don't have that problem here in Colorado. In fact, it's almost too dry. But this past month has been the wettest May that we've had uh, on record for decades. Obviously, I can't really help this factor, but if you have a sprinkler or a watering system that sprays the tree of, of your apple, you might want to change that and keep the top of your apple tree dry. Next piece of advice is also on the other side of the moisture situation, is just making sure that you water your tree enough. Now, of course, not overwatering, but if you have hot, intense, dry summers and your tree is under stress because it's not getting enough water, it will be more susceptible to fire blight. One more piece of helpful information that I have heard from the specialists is don't fertilize your apple trees if you're susceptible to, to fire blight. That's definitely not a problem here because in this food forest, I have very rich soil around the tree anyway, but they say that very fast unchecked growth in the tree's branches can make it more susceptible to fire blight. 
So to recap, I think the most important pieces of advice is the unique advice of not cutting up your apple tree and butchering it necessarily when you see the infection happen. And also very, very, very important is I would say, make sure to look out for good, strong, resilient tree varieties that are very resistant to fire blight. Of course, there is no guarantee of the survival of any tree from fire blight. And look, another permaculture principle is this. You don't want to work overtime to allow certain plants to grow in your garden. You don't want to fight with nature. It is a it is a part to full-time job that at least I don't have the time for. So what I can figure is this. If the tree cannot survive, then I'll just let it go and I'll keep it from being in my garden. I will plant other trees that do very well here. But what I do know is that there are some out there that if they implement this advice, they probably will save their trees. And my hope is that it will keep this from happening in your own garden. Thanks for listening and be blessed.